One day, looking through late 19th and early 20th century story pictures for a completely different reason, I came across this picture and I thought, but that's Emmy. And so it is. Hi. My name is John and I'm a journeyman author and pensioner documenting my quest to be published. Buried in the middle of my previous video about pantsers and plotters, which no one seems too keen to view, is a section about one of the character triads in my science fiction novel in progress. This group involves Emmy, Ben and a machine intelligence I called the machine intelligence a robot in the previous video, but in the book it is known as the counter-teller. I put them into the previous video because of the surprising thing that happened that involved them when I was writing the zero draft of my novel. I was writing it for NaNoWriMo last November. But I also included them because I actually had images for all three of them. When you are writing characters, you may have an image in your head from the start of how they look, or you may fumble towards an idea of them through the mists. I find myself doing both. Um, how important the way a character looks and how many words you need to expend on character description in your novel must, I suppose, be different from situation to situation, from author to author. How much character description do your readers need? How much can they put up with? But I think that having a clear idea of what your character looks like, what your characters look like, can be very important for the author as you write your story. From what I've read and from what I've viewed and from occasional conversations with other writers, I understand that many people go all in to find or even create images of their characters, while others content themselves with simply word descriptions. I fall somewhere between the two poles. My current work in progress has six point of view characters and at least as many significant characters whose stories are reported via the others, but I only have pictures for about half of them. Significantly absent from my picture gallery is my principal point of view character and protagonist, Luce. The working title of the novel is Luce in New London, so you can imagine she's going to be significant. Thinking about this video and about what and why I have images for some but not all of my characters sent me off on a side quest to see if I could find a good image for Luce. That was a good few hours of productivity lost to uh, research, as I like to call my procrastination when I can. Here's the thing. Images for one's characters can be very handy visual references, helping to keep salient details in mind as you are writing about them. But for me at least, finding appropriate images is difficult. Of all the characters in the current work in progress, only the counter-teller's image came easily. And that was because I already had a picture in my mind as I was creating the character. The portrait of Doge Leonardo Loredan by Giovanni Bellini is one I have had the pleasure of seeing in the frame, as it were, in the National Gallery in London. When I was much younger, when I was a university student, I would pass through London several times every year, travelling from home on my way to college, first in Leeds and then in Birmingham. I always arranged to break my journey for a visit to one of the London galleries. Bellini's doge, so calm, so serene, so much like a mannequin, stuck in my head. The counterteller, who is one of my point of view characters, is a standalone computer, an autonomous machine intelligence with its own server hall in a stone built cellar, but it must interact with the humans around it, and it does this through a human like figure apparently seated at the head of a refectory table in a great room the size of a small church built above the server hall. When I was looking for an image of the mannequin that acts as the human-like interface for the counterteller, Bellini's portrait came to mind and that was what I described. Finding Emmy's image was serendipitous. I wasn't looking for her, 
and had already described her in words as a young child when she and her brother Willem first encounter the counter teller. One day, looking through late 19th and early 20th century story pictures for a completely different reason, I came across this picture and I thought, but that's Emmy. And so it is. My guess is it's a picture of a girl about nine or ten years old. Now, my Emmy grows from about five years old to about 16 in the course of the novel. So this only captures her in the middle of that. But I love the seriousness and thoughtfulness of her pose. Exactly the qualities that Emmy has, which distinguish her from her brother and make her into a person the counter teller comes to love. The third member of this triad is Ben Bethel. Now, when Ben meets the counter teller for the first time, he is a junior academic at the University of New London, recently elected to the Senate, the university's governing board, because of his competence with economics. The Senate meets occasionally with the counter teller, which manages their chancellery documents. This gives Ben the opportunity to ask for private help. His 12-year-old niece has been orphaned and is in care somewhere far away from New London. Ben wants to offer to take her in as her guardian and give her a home. But he does not have the means or the knowledge to track her down. The counter teller's immediate response ought to be, what you ask is beyond my purview. This is a phrase it has used before and that comes readily to it. However, Emmy, who has been sitting to one side, supposed to be doing her homework, has been listening in. She comes and puts her hand on the counter teller's shoulder, on the shoulder of the mannequin, that is, and she promises, of course we will help. Finding Ben's face was the most difficult of these three. This time I went out looking, searching for a portrait painting of a middle-aged man of mixed race. For historical reasons in the novel, most of the people of New London are of mixed race. It's surprising how many modern stock photos of young women painting pictures that search called up. And yes, some of the young women were mixed race. Middle-aged men were not much in evidence. I repeated the search with different search engines and different browsers and with variations on the cues. And eventually I struck gold with a series of self-portraits by a modern French artist, one of which seemed to me to embody the qualities I was looking for. This is my Ben. I found the portrait on a Pinterest board where it was not identified and not linked anywhere to its maker. However, an image search using tin eye turned up matches which led me to the artist. And I hope the artist in question doesn't mind my reproducing it here. You'll find a, a proper link to his website in the video description. If you have experience of finding or creating pictures for your characters, please do feel free to share them in the comments. Thanks for viewing this through to the end. If you haven't done so already, please do subscribe for more. I am told that I need to ask people to subscribe at least once in every video. Uh, using the same setup that I had in the very first video, and I'm using the same uh, the good camera, I seem to be doing a lot of that in these films. The good camera, which is still doing the bloody irritating thing of focusing on my face and then changing focus every so often. I'm making a lot of noise about it. Hi, my name is John and I am a journeyman author and somebody who can't do without a script. Goodbye for now.